Well, that depends whose sector you are looking at. I think there's a large amount of smallholders that they don't have access to capital. But uh, there's a small group of smallholders who are more connected to, well, who embrace more uh, commodity crops and they are more connected to companies and global markets who have some access to capital. Also, because that capital comes through the agreements that these smallholders have with companies. Yeah, but it's true that a large portion of smallholders still cannot benefit from capital. And if they have access to some sources of, of funding or finance, they often they have access to informal markets, you know, because in many cases are the intermediaries who provide the capital to, to smallholders. But the fact is that the capital that's coming from informal sources tends to be well, it tends to be more flexible for smallholders, so it works for smallholders in some contexts, but it's much more expensive you know, and it's less reliable. So they have access to capital, but it's much more expensive. And always, I think, the problem of smallholder finance has been how to make this access to capital more affordable. That depends, and I think that's part of the questions. No? I think there's a portion of the private sector that uh, has been able to build links with smallholders through outgrowing outsour schemes, and I think you have companies that have been able to provide capital to smallholders, and not that just capital, but also technical assistance and to build the services into the, the links that they have for smallholders, because they have to ensure that they have enough uh, quality of supply and stable supply coming from these uh, outgrower smallholders. But the fact is that uh, now companies are making uh, commitments no, to uh, a source supply that is, that is clean, is deforestation free. And I think that's, that's one of the main issues that they are struggling with, you know, is how to build this clean sources of supply that involve smallholders, but that is going to imply for them to uh, build some kind of uh, agreements with these groups of, of smallholders that are supplying these companies. Uh, so that's, that's the big issue, you know, because the majority of smallholders are independent smallholders, like in the oil palm uh, sector in Indonesia. That's a good question, and, and uh, I think what is needed is a probably business models that are able to, to share those costs, you know, probably share the costs, share the risks, and share the benefits, you know, because uh, in some, most of the cases you have business models that tend to transfer the cost to the producers that are upstream the supply chains, you know, so, they, so they are the ones who, who, who who pay for the costs. Uh, in an ideal situation, the companies also should be able, if they are targeting deforestation-free uh, markets, they should be able, if there is some reward, to transfer that reward upstream the value chains so that smallholders can also benefit on or receive some compensation of the cost that they are investing in improving their production systems. But that's still an open question and we don't know if that's going to work in that, in that way. They are probably in a difficult position no? because even though they may have the willingness and the capital uh, available for investing with smallholders, I think the transactions costs are, are, are just very high for them to provide this capital to smallholders. So they really need these, uh, I don't know, microfinance institutions, cooperatives, or these aggregators that could, channeling the money through aggregators could be a way to reduce the transaction cost of that, of that uh, lending.